Welcome to Electron Online. In this example, notice that the denominator has a larger exponent than the numerator. So we have x squared in the denominator, x in the numerator. So this one will look a little bit different when we try to work it out. Starting out, however, exactly the same way as before. When we try to grab a rational function, we look at the denominator and determine what x cannot be that will make the denominator equal to 0. So let's factor the denominator and see what we get. So this can be written as 5x divided by x plus 2 times x minus 2, which means that if x is 2 or if x is negative 2, that makes the denominator equal to 0, which it cannot be. So x equals 2 and x equals negative 2, both will, will cause the violation of the rule of a zero denominator. So those will cause two vertical asymptotes when we graph this function. So here's our y-axis. axis. Notice x equals 2, 1, 2, and x equals negative 2 is where we find the two vertical asymptotes. So there's one, and there's the other. Three regions. Now let's see what the rest of the function looks like in that. Now we want to find if there's any horizontal asymptotes. And we can do that by using that trick again. We can say y equals 5x divided by x squared minus 4. And we're going to multiply both the numerator and the denominator by 1 over x to the large exponent that's there, which in this case is x squared, 1 over x squared. Right. Let's see what we get when we do that. Our function now looks like this. y is equal to 5 divided by x in the numerator. And here we get 1 minus 4 over x squared in the denominator. Now let's go ahead and let, uh, let's take the limit of that, the limit as x approaches infinity of 5 over x divided by 1 minus 4 over x squared. Again, we do this because we want to find the horizontal asymptote if there is one. So when we take the limit, we get 5 divided by infinity in the numerator divided by 1 minus 4 divided by infinity squared. Of course, whenever you divide by infinity or infinity squared, you get 0. So this becomes 0 over 1 minus 0, which is simply 0, which means y equals 0 is the horizontal asymptote. And let's indicate that by drawing a dashed line just above the x-axis right there. So now we have basically six regions. Notice the vertical asymptotes cannot be crossed, but the horizontal asymptotes can be crossed. All right, now let's try to find uh, what the graph looks like by trying some test points. We have three regions between the vertical asymptotes. So the middle here, we have x equals 0. That will represent the middle region. How about x equals negative 3 for the left region and x equals positive 3 for the right region? Now let's evaluate our function at those three test points and see what the corresponding y values are. So we have y when x equals 0 is equal to, well, simply 0. So that means y equal, x equals 0, y equals 0 at that point right there. How about x equals negative 3? So y when x equals negative 3 is equal to 5 times negative 3 in the numerator divided by negative 3 squared minus 4 in the denominator, so this is equal to minus 15 divided by 9 minus 4, which is 5, which is minus 3. So when x equals negative 3, y equals negative 3. So negative 3, negative 3, that would be 1, 2, 3, so it would be right about here. How about when x equals 3? y when x equals 3 is equal to 5 times a positive 3 divided by 3 squared minus 4, so it would be 15 over 5, which would be a positive 3. So when x equals 3, y equals 3. So here's 3, and y3, that's be 1, 2, 3, so that's this point right there. We know that the, the graph goes to this point, the graph goes to this, this point, and it goes through this point. So here we can assume that the graph will look like this. Here we can assume that the graph will look like this. Again, we realize we cannot cross the vertical asymptotes and we're not expected to cross the horizontal asymptotes as x becomes large here and as x approaches the negative infinity here. But what about in between? What happens here? There we're not sure yet, so we may need a couple more extra test points. How about x equals 1 and x equals negative 1 just to make sure to see what happens over there. 
plug in those values into our function, we get y when x equals 1 is equal to, that would be 5 in the numerator, and 1 minus 4 or minus 3 in the denominator. So when x equals 1, y is minus 5 thirds. 1 minus 5 thirds, which is right about there. What happens when x equals negative 1? We get 5 times a negative 1, which is minus 5, and negative 1 squared is still 1, minus 4 is minus 3, so we get positive 5 thirds when x equals negative 1. So therefore, when x equals negative 1, over here it's positive 5 thirds, that's there. And since we cannot cross the vertical asymptotes, it looks like in between the function will look like this, and outside the function will look like that. So that's what the graph looks like for that particular rational function. Now, to find the domain and the range, the domain is all values for x, so x such that, notice that x cannot be negative 2, x cannot be 2, but it can be every other value. Therefore, it is from negative infinity all the way to negative 2. From negative 2 all the way to positive 2, and from positive 2 all the way to positive infinity. So those are all the regions where x can, is valid, except for, of course, negative 2 and positive 2. And for the range, all the values for y such that, and notice that y can go on to positive infinity here, negative infinity there, so y is simply an element of all the real numbers. Okay, and that's the domain and the range. And that's how we solve a problem like this, when the exponent in the denominator on the first term is larger than the exponent on the numerator on the first term. And that's how that's done.